afternoon express. Now we're celebrating Freedom Day by heading out into the Cape Winelands to the picturesque town of Rawsonville. Let's open up today's menu which will teach us how to get the best out of a staple of Italian cuisine, pasta. Chef and owner of Picardi Place guest house Jakub Brandt shows us how to make pasta from scratch and how to whip up an authentic bolognese sauce. He is also going to be letting us into his permaculture garden to learn more about his sustainable farming practices in today's Meet the Farmer segment. I'm Balisa Dembe and let's go on a journey. Pasta making is a skill that even the greatest of chefs require. That is why we decided to invite someone who we feel is somewhat of a pasta connoisseur. Jakub Brandt is a man of many talents, one of which is making pasta from scratch. Now Jakub, a man from Cape Town, how do you then become a teacher in the art of pasta making and Italian cuisine specifically. I used to live in Cape Town and then I moved here and then we went to this trip in Italy and then it was just we did this beautiful um, pasta course in Varenzi and I thought to myself that might be the gap in the market for me to start the same pasta course in South Africa and I came back always in love with Italian food and then we started it the next year. And I guess it blew up from there right? Yes it was just amazing everything exploded so I did more than 400 courses now. Well, I'm certainly ready to learn from you. What exactly do we need for this recipe? So we're going to use um, bread flour. It's got a higher gluten content and um, it's also coarser. So it's, it's the best uh, flour to use. And then we're going to use a good quality egg from the farm, special organic, and then olive oil. That's all. That's all, three simple ingredients? Yes. All right, take us through it. What, how do we start this process to get this? All right, so you need a clean surface because that's very important. So I'm going to make a, uh, place the flour in a heap. You can use melamine or marble, or, but we have wood here, this is good. And I'm going to make a hole or a little well in the center of this. And I'm going to break my egg. So we're going to make for five people now. Okay. So we, we're going to use, um, so the recipe actually is for, is 500 grams. So for 500 grams of flour, we're going to need five eggs. Okay. So I'm just going to break the eggs into this well. And you break them all in at once? Yeah, same time. And you know the one thing I love about using farm fresh eggs is that the yolk is so much more yellow and so much more nutritious than store-bought eggs. Absolutely, you can see the yellowness in this egg, it's just amazing. So we're going to add the um, olive oil now, four, five teaspoons of olive oil. So in essence it's a one-to-one -one ratio, if 100 yes. grams of um, flour to one egg to one teaspoon of yes, olive oil. absolutely. Is there a difference with the type of olive oil you use? The best is to use a good extra virgin olive oil. Perfect. All right, then what do we do next? So you, need a, you need a fork. Not a whisk. No, a fork, because it's a flat surface. So you need a fork to mix the olive oil and the eggs together. Okay. This is quite a trick in it. So, um, and then after that, gradually, you can start to um, add some of the flour from the outside. Okay. to the mixture and I guess as you keep doing this you don't have to worry about lumps because we are going to get in our yes, hands. Yes, it's quite important um, um, so we don't want any lumps so slowly you can just start to beat this up. Okay, should I? And it, until it becomes like a beautiful paste. Okay, and just slowly incorporate it. Yes, it so um, the moment the, um, the mixture is to, um, the moment you can't use your fork anymore you will then start to knead with your hands. All right, now pasta is quite a skill and some people do get it wrong. What did you think the mistakes are that people make when making pasta? I think maybe too much flour in the beginning and then also lumps. Okay. Yeah, and the whole idea is just to keep it like um, back to basics. That's uh, the main thing is to keep it simple, keep it plain, less ingredients. I noticed that you add eggs into your dough here, into your mixture, and some people do make the pasta without the egg. Is there a reason why you've chosen to use eggs? I think it's about the richness that you want to create with this meal. So you can even add more um, yellow, egg yellow, to the, to, to the pasta and then um, it will be more richer. So I think it's about that. Yaku, you've had pasta from Italy, right? What would you say makes their pasta so much more nutritious and delicious? I think it's the freshness. Oh my, it's just amazing just to have that beautiful homemade pasta on your plate. It's just amazing. And also with the sauces they use, it's just so amazing. So I think we get so used to buy pasta in the shop, but rather just make your own pasta. It's a bit of more effort, but at the end of the day, it's definitely worth it. And definitely has a whole lot of love because I see you working it over there. So you always use fresh flour to clean your fork. And now I'm gonna use my hands to knead it further. 
This is where you're getting your hands dirty now. You're gonna be yes. kneading away. I was worried at the beginning that it might be a little too runny, but now it absolutely makes sense because it's all come together into that thick dough that we wanted. Yes, yes it becomes beautiful now. So I'm gonna knead this now for about um, a few minutes until it becomes smooth like your grandmother's cheeks. <laughs> Whenever I need anything, I always have that uh, pressure in my arms and I always feel so tired. Yes, but in South Africa, we always use our hands like, mm. to, to, to knead bread, um, if you need bread. But in Italy, they um, use their body weight, so there's no pressure on their muscles. Okay. So they will just put their um, strongest hand on the, on the dough and then the other hand on top of that and they will just go like this. So they actually put all their weight into the dough and there's no pressure on the muscles. So that actually makes sense because even as I'm doing it now, I'm not feeling any pressure on my yes. arms. It's more like uh, yes. it's a full body workout actually. <laughs> and um, it's also very good therapy. It's amazing. It definitely is. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, what kneading actually does is that it activates the gluten in the flour and it gives it that stretchy texture which you absolutely need for that awesome bite in your pasta. All right, and I'm guessing it's ready to use now, right? Not yet. So um, you need some wax paper, about 25 centimeters long, all sides. And you're gonna just um, coat it with some olive oil, only on the one side. Just wrap it in like that. So just like you would do with bread then, where you need the yeast, if you're working with yeast, you need to let it rest and proof and so yes. forth. It's sort of like the similar process. Yeah, but um, there's no yeast in this. Yes. So you need to rest so for all the gluten and stuff to get free, to activate. And you're gonna just wrap it like that. And now, if you want to um, use it for later, you can put it in the freezer, or we're gonna let it rest for about 45 minutes while we do the bolognese inside. Great stuff. When we return, we're taking in the sustainable gardening practices implemented at Picardi Place by Chef Yaku and permaculture expert Gurbas. Now we're attempting to make our own authentic pasta on the show. So on social media, let us know what's your favorite pasta dish. Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Good morning, boy. How's it, Dad? How's the exams going? Um, 100%? 100% what? 100% crush. 100% fruit. 100% goodness. With love by Clover. Express
we're back with Afternoon Express. Now, if you've never heard of permaculture or would like to learn more of what it requires, keep watching as Chef Dumi meets the farmer at Picardi Place, Kurbis Kritzinger. Yaku, everything here smells so fresh and inviting. What actually sparked the idea behind Picardi Place? So I met Kurbis a year before the Italy trip. And in that market, when I was sowing all this beautiful um, fresh produce, I thought to myself, I'm going to get Kurbis. I'm going to get back to South Africa to start the garden for me. Kurbis, I've never heard about permaculture before, but I'd like you to just break it down for us and tell us what the philosophy is behind permaculture. Yeah, so permaculture is a movement that started in Australia in the late 70s already. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a way of uh, cutting out the fossil fuel cost of food so we try to find ways to grow food as close as possible to where people live uh, and to make the the carbon footprint of this the food as small as possible so that's the kind of premise for permaculture uh, it's called permaculture because it's permanent agriculture. And I know a lot of gardening has to do with seasonality. What type of fruits and veggies are grown on this farm and what is in season at the moment? So there's a lot of late summer produce here in Yaku's garden especially because summer tends to come on a bit later. Uh, that's why you'll see we still have all these lovely green beans, the climbing beans. If the beans aren't going to reach maturity because um, winter's coming, you can harvest the flowers and use those in your salads, get a lovely bean taste into your salads. There's also a lot of late tomatoes, there's some chilies you can see over there. Um, there's obviously all your herbs, a lot of lettuce. So into today's meal, uh, when we have a, a, a side salad, it's going to be all the lettuce that Yaku grows in his garden. Lettuce is a very good example uh, of what you'd like to grow because it's not only healthy to eat, but it's one of the... The, the fresh products that we buy with the biggest carbon footprint in relation to the energy that we can get back from those leaves. And I'm guessing that also has to do with the lack of using pesticides here. You like to keep it as natural as possible. We don't use any biocides. The issue is that when we interfere with, uh, with the way that nature addresses problems and uh, upset the balance, then it's uh, always going to take longer to re-establish the balance. You'll see that there is some pest presence in a permaculture garden. There's always some pest presence. You need them. Otherwise, there's nothing for the predatory insects to eat, for the birds, for the spiders. People tend to jump on a pest and say, I need to control this. The first sign of it, you need to control it. Nature's already been doing it for, for quite a few millennia, so it knows what to do. It knows how to re-establish the balance. All we need to do is allow it. Now, Quibus, for an amateur gardener, how possible would it be for me to start something as simple as this at home? The first thing would be observation which is the first principle of permaculture as well. So if you've been living in your house for a while and you know which direction the wind comes from, you know where the sun comes up. So you would typically start on the eastern side of your house where you get nice morning light and then uh, start in pots if you, can't, uh, if you can't start anywhere else. Rather start in pots and get some experience. Lettuce grows very well in a pot. Uh, a lot of our herbs grow very well in pots. So even if you don't have the space and you only have a balcony, try to get going. That's, that would be my biggest piece of advice. Just start with something. All right, now, Yaku, we're going to be making a tasty bolognese sauce. Uh, is there anything in the garden that we'll be using today? Yes, definitely. We're going to use some chilies. Look at this beautiful chilies for the bolognese. Very good in bolognese. And then some basil as well, but we will harvest it later. Well, I absolutely cannot wait to sink my teeth into that beautiful bolognese sauce. But we are asking you on social media, are you a gardener? And have you tried your hand at permaculture? Let us know and use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Next stop, Soweto. This week on Olive Pride Chef Tour, foodie sensation Luyanda Mafanya hits the road from Limpombo and makes her way to the iconic Villa Gazi Street in Soweto, Johannesburg, in search of authentic South African flavors and history. Cook along with us on the Clover Olive Pride Chef's Tour, a proudly South African cooking journey through the towns and dishes that made foodie heroes, such as the champion of traditional African cuisine, Luyanda Mafanya, master of fine dining chef Ruben Riffle, and proud flag bearer of National Bride Day, Yan Bry. Made with Olive Pride, prepare to be proud. 
It's Destination Soweto this week on the Olive Pride Chef's Tour as social media food phenomenon Luyanda Mafanya takes stock of how the greats who took a stand here made her food journey possible. I'm a Jibba girl through and through. I love to eat and play in the city. But today, I've decided to venture to Soweto and reconnect with authentic South African history, culture, and food. And what better place to come to than Velagazi Street? We are at 8115 Villagazi Street, the home of former President Nelson Mandela. Also, this is the only street in the world to house two Nobel Peace Prize winners, Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. As a born free, born in 1994, this house symbolizes freedom, the freedom that I get to live right now each and every day in South Africa. Being on this journey with Olive Pride reminds me of my own food journey. A journey that started about five years ago when I experienced my biggest losses, losing my grandmother. Food was our big connector, and the only way I was able to heal and mourn her was to cook. Started cooking all the time, which ended up having me start a blog, which ended up having me being who I am today. Something that you guys know as Cooking with Leander. Cooking with Leander has grown from strength to strength over the years, and I'm so excited for you guys to continue following my journey. For now, let's see what's cooking in Soweto. One thing I love about the streets is the culture, the music, the food, and everyone here is just trying to hustle. How can you not be inspired by this place? walking around has gotten me so hungry and I can't leave so it's without having a traditional meal. So I'm here, I'm about to have some mohoru, also known as tripe. I've always grown up eating mohoru. I love mohoru. I love everything traditional. Mm, mm, mm. This is so delicious. This is a more curried flavor one. It's slightly different from how I usually eat it because I usually eat it very plain with very few flavors, but this is a great way to add a twist to it. And this is some great inspiration for what I should make later. I'm so excited for the dish I'm gonna come up with. Cook along with Luyanda on next week's Olive Pride Chef's Tour as she creates a Soweto-inspired winter wonder. This beef stew with caramelized onion dumplings freshened with a finishing of gremolata is a hearty great hug from the inside and a recipe not to be missed. This Olive Pride Chef's Tour makes me want to travel my way and eat my way through this country. But make sure you tune in again next week, Tuesday, when Luyanda takes all of her travel inspiration and turns it into something delicious. Join Olive Pride Chef's Tour and travel the country as we cook along with Luyanda Mafanya, Ruben Riffel and Young Bry every Tuesday on Afternoon Express. Win one of ten cooking appliances weekly or a grand prize of a kitchen makeover worth 150,000 rand. To enter, buy any Olive Pride pack and dial star 120 star 2462 star with your unique code to enter. Prepare to be proud. Guess who's back again and make sure to tell your friends. One of our favorite chefs, or Chef Anele, a.k.a. Anal Porjiter, returns to our kitchen to show us how to make a giant ravioli. Yes, bring the family, 100%. Your cousin's coming over. Get the crush and I'll get the ice. The whole family? More crush, ma? 100% refreshing, 100% goodness. Made with love by Clover. 
Pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. The people come to us first because we do not charge them to give them advice. First of all, they run in and they get attention immediately. And people come to us with all kinds of different queries. So I love people and I want to help people. And after more than 30 years, that's still what I want to do and still what I do on a daily basis. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, where we had to call on one of our family favorites, Chef Anele. Oh, it's so great to be back, Polly, and I can't wait to cook with you again. Now, Chef Anele, we've seen Chef Dumi and Chef Yaku out there in Rawsonville creating their very own pasta from scratch. Now a round of applause from them, but we've got some handy helpers. Yes, I'm going to use a machine today, so I'm going to show you how to do it with a machine, but I want you to come over here. Okay, so what exactly are you showing us? Tell us very much in yeah. detail, and how is it very difficult? Different to what Chef Dumi is doing that side. So what they've done, they made the same dough as what we've made, okay? And that what they they're gonna roll it out by hand and cut it by hand. But we've got a machine and we can do it by machine. It's so much easier. And then we're gonna make a giant ravioli for you with beautiful ricotta and a whole egg inside. What do you think about that? It sounds <laughs> delicious. I'm very excited about it because today it's all about upscale that Italian classic that is pasta and showing us versatile ways of using it and enjoying it. What I love about living in the 21st century, we've got such handy helpers, a pasta roller to roll it out for us. So you see now, it's quite a thicker, thicker base, but we want it thinner. So what I want you to do is add some flour on top of it. You need to add more flour. Otherwise, it's going to stick on this machine and that's a big gemort. So <laughs> just put some flour on here. Okay. Like you have to, oh. do you see what I mean? Like yes. that. And then bring this part again to the machine. So South Africa and all of our viewers out there, we always have to remember to dust your pasta with that flour so that the pasta does not stick on the pasta roller. We yes. want clean sheets of pasta here. 
Okay, now we're gonna, now we've put it on a thinner, on a thinner setting. Why is yours not going through? There <laughs> we go, grab it at the bottom there, Polly. There we go. Do you see it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner? Making so, it longer and yeah. longer and longer. So I'm gonna put it now on five. So we're gonna put it through now again. I'm just putting it the wrong way. Look how thinner it's getting now. Beautiful. But I want you to dust it again with a bit of flour. You see it's starting to stick to yes, the machine. Yes, yes. And we don't want that. So dusting over there, dusting, 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 dusting. So we're going to put it through for the last time now. And I'm going to tell you when it's ready. I'm going to let you do something. Okay. So, okay, let's just do this. Grab it at the bottom. See how beautifully thin it is wow. now. That is the thickness that you want. So if you want to see if it's a, the right type of thickness, mm -hmm. what they do in Italy, they blow on it. <sighs> if it lifts like that, then you know it's perfect. So <laughs> I think it, try and blow on it and see if it's perfect. Okay, wish me luck. One, two, three, go. <sighs> yes! <laughs> I love that it's yes. paper thin and that's exactly yes. what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to give this to you on that. So I take that with because you're going to work with that just now. Just put it on the board there. And now we're going to make a filling for our ravioli because we make these beautiful giant raviolis over here. So we've got some ricotta, so I just want you to f loosen it up a little bit because, of course, ricotta can be quite stiff. So we're just going to loosen it up. We're going to add some parmesan in here. Do you have some parmesan there, Polly? I Pally? do. Yes. What I love about ricotta, it's a homemade mm. cheese, isn't it? Yes. And parmesan is going to add that beautiful salty umami flavor in it. Then, Polly, we need some basil. I've got some basil there for you. You can just chop a little bit up. You don't have to, it can be rough as well. It doesn't have to, it's just to flavor it. It doesn't have to be like finely chopped in there. Oh, it smells delicious. Isn't hey? it that flavor? It's like that floral, beautiful basil. And you know, basil and pasta is like a match made in heaven, you know? Yep, with a whole lot of olive oil drizzled on top. Yeah. I love it. So when it comes to fillings and actually mm. making things for this um, delicious yes. uh, ravioli, when I have to think of maybe thinly sliced pastas to big sliced pastas, yes. what's the best sauce to go with the um, different pastas? A lot of the time they're creamy base, tomato bases. Yes. You know, for this one, we're just going to use a little bit of butter, but I think it's more important to talk about the inside of the pasta. Oh. Because with a ravioli, you don't, you don't want something that's very runny, that's going to run out of your ravioli, actually. So you need something quite sturdy like this. So you just mix this together. You can always season with a little bit of salt, a bit of pepper. Polly, here's some salt and pepper for you, darling. Thanks. There we go. And that's basically the one side of the filling. Polly, now the fun part's going to start. I know, I've already got uh, <laughs> it potting and bubbling over here. It's quite hot in this kitchen because I've already melted down the butter, butter. that you've given me. And there's some crispy bacon that's also been added to the pot. And now I just stir. That's going to go over the finished ravioli. Okay. So grab your piece of pasta that you've got there. The important part starts now. And you take a bit of this ravioli. Yes. Of this ravioli, you scoop it onto your pasta like so. So first you want to create like a little bit of a well inside your ricotta, like I've done here. Because you know what we're going to put inside there? An egg yellow. So when you cut your ravioli, it's going to ooze out of there. I do. I've made and a well. And now you have to separate your egg from the, from the white. Try not to break it. So what I do then is just like, a, and then you add it to the center of this beautiful, isn't, doesn't this look gorgeous? This really yeah, does. And I'm quite intrigued as to how it's going to taste. Oh, no. I do love I myself a good ravioli. ravioli. And, and focusing on pasta today in this, in this Tuesday Masterclass yeah. makes all the difference. I love to find new ways of enjoying this dish. And this look is like a that. real crowd pleaser. Polly, all you do now, take a bit of water and put it on the sides with your finger. Just wet it around because the pasta must stick to it. Then the other layer you're going to put over it. And this is to ensure that the pasta doesn't sticks together. That sticks together because you don't want the rivioli to open up while mm, you're cooking it. Beautiful. And now you take the pasta and you fold it over like this. Just fold it over. There you go. And then the big trick is, is to take your hands and form like a beautiful round parcel and push down so the Pasta sh sheets stick together, okay, like that. And that will ensure that it doesn't open up. 
Chef Anele, you've made pasta making from scratch that much more easier. We rolled out our pasta, we filled the pasta, and now we're shaping our pasta. Now you use that. And what I want to show viewers, if you don't have one of those, use anything, look like this, and you just cut it, you can ah, just get a knife. Wow. You cut it like this on the sides. And Polly, this goes into a boiling water. Look how beautiful this is. Isn't this stunning? It is gorgeous. And imagine you give this to one of your guests with a bit of that beautiful butter and the bacon over it, like we serve it there. Yeah. Then you just add this to your pot for about two minutes and then the egg will still be runny. Polly, look how beautiful this is. Let me take it out. Just one is beautiful for somebody, for a starter or if it's main. So I've got some of this bacon. We're going to put that over with this beautiful burnt butter. Let me help you as well with yeah. some parmesan on add top. Add some parmesan and we're going to add some fresh herbs, like micro herbs on top of there. And always a basil leaf or two. And there we go. Is it safe to say that's prepared al dente? Definitely al dente, to the tooth. Chef Anneli, let's put yours to the test. Let's see if that egg yolk comes out perfect. I'm taking it on. Let's go. Yeah. And oh, look, look at, at that. that. Just like that. Prepared al dente, to the tooth. To the tooth. And perfect yellow, like a runny. And it's going to coat that pasta beautifully. Bellissimo. And speaking of Bellissimo, with some tips and some practice, of course, you should be well on your way to becoming an expert in homemade Italian cuisine. And now, andiamo. Let's go back to Rosenville with Chef Dumi and Chef Yaku to learn how to make the perfect bolognese sauce. It's a beautiful autumn afternoon. I'm here at Picardi Place just outside Rosenville with Chef Yaku Brunt. He's invited us into his kitchen because, as we all know, a pasta dish is not complete without that perfect pasta sauce. Now, Chef, I see here there's a lot of, well, not even a lot, there's quite a few simple ingredients that you've got for us. I think the main secret is to keep it simple. So we're going to use um, onions and then um, garlic, chilies from the garden, herb salt, um, coarse black pepper. So we're going to use half pork mince, uh, good lean beef mince, and peeled tomatoes, and good red wine from the area. And then two hands of basil leaves, um, also picked earlier in the garden. Is this also another recipe or trick that you learned in your classes in, in Italy? Yes, that's um, Giovanni's recipe actually from Frenzy in Italy. Okay, and is that the reason for you using both pork and uh, lean beef mince? I think the reason is um, the flavor. So while we use um, lean beef mince to add a bit of fat as well, the pork is very good, but I think the main secret is the flavor of the pork. And a good quality olive oil, I figure. Definitely. <laughs> okay, then let's get cooking. Right, so just we're gonna heat it up and begin our saucepan and we're gonna add some olive oil. Then we're gonna add some onions. So we will just gently fry the onions until it becomes um, translucent and then we're gonna add the chili and the garlic. You want to add your garlic a little later is you don't want it to burn because once it burns it has that bitter taste but also you want to develop that flavor correct now yaku adding garlic i understand but adding the chilies to a bolognese that's not something you'd normally do that's also a companion of basil and tomato we're going to use so and it also that um, i think that's a little surprise in the meal afterwards so we're going to use half lean beef mince and half pork mince so the secret here is a very good um, meat and fat ratio because um, also for the flavor. So I think you need a bit of that um, pork into the meat for the flavor. So in South Africa, we use a lot of beef, mainly beef. But when you go to Italy, they use a lot of pork in their uh, meals. So that's maybe also a bit of a secret. While the meat is browning now, we're going to use this fresh homemade herb salt from a friend of mine, but um, it's difficult to get hold of, so you can just use any type of salt. In with the tomatoes now. In summertime, you can use your own tomatoes, but we're going to use peeled tin tomatoes for now. I'm just going to break them down with my spatula, but they will cook away anyway. A lot of people, including myself, like to add a couple of different ingredients like tomato sauce and sugar, but I see you've kept it very simple. Is this something you teach in your classes? Yes, we call the course back to basics. So it's all about less ingredients, but good quality ingredients. So we don't need, we don't need all these funny stuff like carrots and whatever. So we're going to use less ingredients, but good quality stuff. And then it's all enough. In with the red wine. 
Because there's no sugar in the tomatoes, um, and also to balance the acidity of the tomatoes, we're going to add some red wine. I use a sweeter red wine. That's maybe a bit of a secret as well. Now, Yaku, I've been picking away at this beautiful, fresh basil from your garden. I'm assuming it's going in now. Yes, fresh herbs is always the best in the kitchen or for any dish because you have these beautiful flavors of basil in your kitchen and it's a good companion for your um, tomato. As simple as that, so we're going to let this simmer until all the beautiful flavors come together. We've just seen Chef Dumi whip up a delicious authentic bolognese sauce. So coming up, Chef Anneli and I will be making a delicious Neapolitan tomato sauce for our dry pasta. Parcel and to make it from scratch that that sticks together because you don't want the rivioli to open up out of there. I do. I've made and a now while. you have to separate your egg from the from the white. It makes all the difference. I love to find new ways of enjoying this dish. And this Look is like a that. real crowd pleaser. Welcome back to our Tuesday Masterclass with Chef Anele. Anele, I see that we've got quite a bit of pasta spread out. Can you just talk us through the different types? You know what we're going to do today? We've just made handmade pasta, but we've got all of this in our pantry. So let me start off with you. What is this, Pali? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. So spaghetti, normally you, you can use like a robust meaty sauce, like spaghetti bolognese. They will go well with it. This is Pali? I don't know. Ah. Tagliatelli. Tagliatelli. Um, and that is also for like creamy sauces, rich tomato sauces. Beautiful. And this, what does this look like? We call them bow ties. Yes, or <laughs> butterflies. They make me happy. My mom used this in, in, you know, in a salad, you know, the mayonnaise salad. But it's lovely and it's beautiful also with like a creamy sauce. And this is fusilli. Fusilli. We're going to use this today. Tenacitama screw. Ah. 
Exactly. Also lovely to make it pasta salad. Yeah. They love it, the mamas and the gogos. But I'm going to put some here in the pot because we're going to use it for today. Beautiful. So yeah. whilst that's bubbling under and coming together quite well, we're making our very own mm. bolognese sauce. Simple, quick, easy as you've yes. promised. Yes. You can start chopping the carrot because we need the carrot. I'm going to do the onion and the celery. But Polly, I first wanted to talk to you about this as well. This is penne pasta. This is my favorite pasta. Yeah. It comes in different sizes. And you know, this is there's a pasta penna arrabbiata. I have never heard it's of that. It's the one with tomato sauce. And then we've got gnocchi here. Gnocchi with like a blue cheese sauce. Gnocchi is made from potato and flour, equal amounts. I and love that. That's delicious. I yes. love myself a good gnocchi as well. It's quite a nice variant when you're looking for that starch sometimes no. in a dish. Anele, as I'm chopping away at my carrots, what are you chopping to make your tomato sauce? We're going to chop up onions and carrots and celery and then we're gonna fry it till it's like soft and translucent so I'm gonna first add some oil to my pan a bit of olive oil I say add enough you know because it will mix with the tomato and it's gonna form like a rich rich sauce so Polly I want to show you a trick with this celery you cut it in lengthwise like this so it's like senior it's like a few legs and then it's easy to chop it up in small pieces without your celery going all over the place I and know. dancing on your chopping board I know and, it, and, and immediately you've got some small blocks it's not like big blocks that you have to cut all over again I've also made sure here that with my carrots I've tried to chop it up in even pieces just to make sure that when it does cook through it cooks through quite easily and quite nicely so Polly just check the pasta you see, the, the big thing about pasta cooking, you mustn't have too much pasta in the pot. Otherwise, they stick together. And you don't have to add oil in either, so it looks perfect. I tend to overpack my pots with pasta. Ah, that's a big thing. Then we need some basil. Can you pick some basil here? And I need lots of basil to go in here. We're somewhere going to pick it from this little basil plant here. It's always handy to have a plant like that in your kitchen. And it smells oh, delicious. I think it'll it. come together quite nicely yeah. in your tomato sauce. Absolutely. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil in here. And then the other pantry staple is the tin tomatoes. This is my favorite pantry staple. And then you get it like this hole. But I do, I just squeeze it like oh, that. Wow. So you don't have to cut it. <laughs> and then it's not afraid to get messy in I the know, kitchen. We have to. So I'm going to do that. Is that just a quicker and easier way to it's put it together than chopping? It's so much faster. Pali, how long would have you been chopping now if you had to do this, hey? And then you just got your little towel to clean your hands next to you and voila! Can you stir that for me, please? Lovely. It's looking quite well yeah. and putting, coming together quite well as well. I also like the fact here that you put in fresh vegetables within your tomato sauce, not only just relying on the tomato yeah. to do all the work. It gives it that robust feeling. And what you actually do, if the carrot was a bit smaller, we would have crunched them with the sauce. But it's okay, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the lesson learned, lesson learned, yeah. Yeah, and that's what it's all about on this Tuesday Masterclass, teaching us quick, easy ways, but the best ways to whip up nothing but the best. Today, it's all about pasta and elevating our pasta dishes, and we're focusing on a delicious, full-bodied red sauce to start alongside our pasta. And this is like, the Italians love this. This is one of the most beautiful dishes. So this, what you can add, you can add anchovies, you can add capers, you can add bacon. This is your basic sauce. So we've already got some cooked fusellini and the reason why we're using this those little grooves the pasta sauce is going to be stick into this little grooves wow. of it so and is that then mirroring what we were speaking about quite earlier that it's very key and very essential to pair the pasta with the right type of sauce with the right type of sauce a hundred percent it won't work so nicely with gnocchi funny but we've already got a cooked one there can you pass that on for me yes and then i'm going to dish up here on the it's hot. Oh, it is hot. You will see now the consistency, how beautiful and rich it is. Look at that. And Look this is that perfect dog. for a, ve uh, a vegetarian viewer or someone who's just taking a bit of a meat-free moment. Yes, and if you've got somebody that likes meat, I say add the bacon. You know, add a piece of fish even. It will be beautiful with mm. prawns or anything like that. We're going to add a really lot of parmesan. I love a lot of parmesan on there. And we always finish it off with a bit of basil. Let's pick up a few leaves here. When it comes to food styling, very important when you have quite a lot of red and red-based sauces. Yes. Level it out, balance it out with that green as well, just to add another element, and voila.
Look how beautiful that is and how quickly that was. Now, in case you've missed any of those steps, just head over to our website for the full ingredients list and recipe. But it's time to head back to Picardi Place in Rawsonville, where Chef Dumi will be learning how to roll and cook pasta that she's made with Chef Yaku from scratch. And now for my favorite part, Yaku, the rolling of that pasta. Yes, look at our beautiful dough that we made earlier. So it's rested now, so we're going to cut it. And would this be the base recipe for any pasta dish? Yes, you can also make ravioli or lasagna sheet. But today we're going to make a, a simple cut it's called pappardella. So let's show you how to do this beautiful pappardella. So you need, you're going to just add some flour. It's just always important to have enough flour on the surface, otherwise to, to prevent it sticking. So we're going to roll it out quite slowly, and then we're going to flip it around. Add some more flour, so this prevents um, the dough from breaking. And then we're going to slowly roll it out. You can see how beautiful this dough stretched now because of that gluten that actually stretches now. Turn it around. And then the main secret is when you can see the surface below, like the grain of the wood, then that's a sign that the pasta is thin enough. I think this is almost ready. Let's turn. Let's do it one more time and then we can turn it. So we're going to just add some flour and then we're going to fold it up softly because we need to cut it again. Slowly like this. Ah, and now you're just going to cut off the ends. But we're going to just do an easy cut called pappardella like this. And now the nice thing to do is to unfold it. And then you have your ooh, beautiful homemade pappardella pasta. As simple as this. So if you want to eat it now, we're going to just put it straight into boiling water and let it cook for two minutes. We don't want it to end, but soon we need to wrap up our visit to the gorgeous Bacardi place in Rawsonville. All that and more coming up.
can't always be everywhere at once, but using technology to be our best friend, we can certainly try. So before Dumi and Yaku dine to eat their amazing pasta dish, we thought that we would test our general knowledge on the subject, pasta. And since Dumi can't be here to join in on the fun, we'll connect with her virtually for a fun little pasta quiz. Hey Dumi, how you doing girl? I'm glad to see you. Hey Bali, how are you? My gosh, I'm in Rosenville. I've never been. It is so beautiful, Bali, so you would love it. I'm actually a little jealous of you right now because it seems like the sun is hitting you, queen. But I love the fact that we can connect virtually right now, thanks to Vodacom Home. <laughs> Yes, Palissa, and now that we're connecting, how's about I quiz you on a couple of things regarding pasta, right? Because we're making pasta the same. Okay, well, the masterclass is in session, so it's time for the exam. I'm ready, girl. You know, I'm going to ask you five questions. If you get those right, then we could call you a pasta master. If not, then we'll have to, I'll have to reconsider this, com this friendship I have with you. Okay, fine. Can I ask you the same, well, different five questions right back? And whoever wins is the pasta master. <laughs> okay, girl, let's do this. Deal, I'm ready. All right, cool. First question, Bali. Where exactly in Italy did pasta originate? Oh, right, this is an easy one. Sicily, I don't even need time for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well done, well done. Second one, right? These two types of pastas, fettuccine and parpadelle, which one is wider? Ooh, so first and foremost, I've never heard of parpadelle. So I'm just gonna stick with fettuccine. Oh, my French. Pa, 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 pa. How? No. It's parpadelle. Oh, well, you're going to have to come back into studio and show me exactly what, what <laughs> pasta that is. Okay, fine. So it's one. No problem. I only have one point. Third, one point for you now. Third question. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with gnocchi. I think you are. What are the three main ingredients or key ingredients to make gnocchi? So, Tumi, I actually feel like this one is a little bit of a cheat because earlier on in the show, Chef Anele already spilled the tea, honey, and it's potato, flour, okay. and egg. Thank you, Chef Anele. <laughs> it's a pity I wasn't there to check it in, but anyway, cool. So you're sitting on two right now, right? Yep. So, fourth question, um, which cheese is typically served with pasta? Uh, parmesan. Okay, I'll, I'll give that to you because it's either Parmesan or uh, Pecorino, it depends which one. But well done, I'll give, I'll give you that point. And last but not least, right? Uh -huh. um, there are three ingredients that are normally found in a carbonara sauce. Which three ingredients am I referring to? Or carbonara pasta? Okay, number one I know definitely is egg because I'm always afraid that I'm gonna scramble my egg <laughs> when making it. Um, second, butter. And I'm going to go for a little oh, bit of a cheese. Oh, 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 was that wrong? Oh, I don't know. I give up. This is too difficult. Just give me the answer. But then you just answered the one just now in the other question. But parmesan is always in pasta, right? Most all the time. Oh, okay. So parmesan, yeah, and pancetta. But we normally use bacon, so I guess that counts as well. Bacon! Okay, okay, fine. I feel like I'm all <laughs> queued up. So, Dumi, do you want to give me a quick point tally? Well done, Bella. So you've done quite well. I think you've gotten three out of the five questions. So that's that's above average. Well done. <laughs> yeah, that's more than a pass. But I think it's time for me to challenge you right back, Queen. I've got five questions of my own. Are you ready? I'm ready, girl. Cool. So, Dumi, please may you just spell for me gnocchi. You know how I used to get this one? I used to pronounce it and say gnocchi, and that's how I got it. And that's G-N-O-C-C-H-I. Yay! <laughs> Absolutely correct. Tick to you, Dumi. Now, Dumi, my second question for you. What does al dente mean? I used to always think al dente, al dente meant to the touch, and it actually is to the tooth. I feel like this is so unfair, Queen. I mean, you are a foodie at the end of the day, so 100%. <laughs> so far, you're two for two. Let's see if you can get number three right. So, Dumi, when is World Pasta Month? Oh, gosh. Okay, now that's something I don't know, because I eat pasta, but I don't generally, uh, to be honest, Bali, I don't know. <laughs> okay, don't girl, know. I'm going to feed you this one. It's in October, in the month of October. Oh, so October 1st, pasta first. I guess that counts. Okay, fine. So it is two points to you right now. If you get yeah. this next point right, then we are square in terms of points. So, me, what does pasta freca mean? Pasta fresca, mm. right? That's what I'm saying, pasta fresca. If I think about it, it, fresca normally means fresh, so 
Fresh? Fresh pasta? Everything's got to be fresh. Congratulations, girl. So now we tie. So if you then walk away with this fourth one, fifth and fourth one, then you ultimately walk away as the winner, as the pasta master. So then, Domi, okay. where in Italy does pesto pasta originate? Taibo. Angas. Angas. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, girl, I also had to do a little bit of Googling for this one. And it actually originates from Giano. Where's that? I, I, I ain't it's got no clue where that is. Somewhere in Italy, girl. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's Genoa. Congratulations, Dumi, girlfriend. I think that it's safe to say we are Thai as the pasta masters. <laughs> oh, what an amazing way to have a little fun in the kitchen. And it is absolutely amazing how we can use technology to bring us together to enjoy moments like these. Open up your home to a world of opportunities with Vodacom Home. When your family connects, we go further together. Now, it's been such a magical evening evening in Rawsonville, lapping up all that Picardi place and Chef Yaku and Gorbis have brought to the table. Now let's get to know the gentlemen a little bit better over dinner. Gentlemen, thank you so much for all your lessons. Yaku, this looks absolutely divine. Thank you. We have beautiful pasta here. The pasta has been cooked for two minutes. We have the bolognese and we topped up that with a beautiful parmesan cheese. And then we made the salad from the garden. Quibus, what's in the salad? The salad has lots of seasonal leaves. It's got some of the basil that also went into the bolognese. And then I see uh, a few things like mizuna. There's some a rocket in there, all in the mustard family. We've even got a bit of um, Vietnamese coriander there. Well, gentlemen, there's no time like the present. Let's do it. I hope it's good. Yaku, this bolognese is divine. And I mean, that chili that you mentioned that you added in there, it works so perfectly with that sweet wine that we added and the topping of the basil. I mean, we've cooked it in there, but also just adding that bit on the top is just levels of flavor that you can't imagine. Yaku, this is quite a serene venue and I know you run cooking classes here, but I'd like to think this would be a perfect wedding venue. Okay, that's what we do here. So this is a perfect place to set up a table. We can sit, um, seat 60 people down here or we do the barn. Um, outside. This place looks so cozy. I mean, I could sit here all day. Was this all done strategically? We've got the southeaster blowing a little bit this afternoon, but in summer that's a good thing. We want that in the garden because it cools things down a little bit, so it's a, a gradual hedge on that side. It's, uh, it's not a, a, a solid surface. And then on the other side, the northwestern side, we've got the very damaging winter winds. Um, We've put a proper hedge in place because uh, it, the wind can pump down the valley uh, during the winter. That's why it feels cozy. It creates a bit of a microclimate in here. And from the cold as well. Yes, definitely. It traps sunlight. The leaves are of this specific species of plant that we have for the hedges is a, a shiny leaf, so it even reflects a bit of sunlight back into the garden. And also the main, um, our main focus was for people when they visit, we'd like to um, create an experience for them that's a bit different than the normal. The people can come and experience something that that's, that's, seems very simple, but at the same time it's wonderful. One thing I've definitely seen is your love for nature, but definitely your love for food. I'm going to continue digging into this amazing dish, but you can join us again on Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. But for now, it's good night, stay safe and happy eating. Here's to the last slice of summer and the first taste of autumn. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.